If you give me a couple of minutes, I will help end your confusion with debits and credits in accounting. We will also discuss the logic behind debit and credit rules. So make sure you watch till the end. Do you know Alice, the girl from Alice in Wonderland? Alice will be your best friend when it comes to learning the rules of debit versus credit. You need one more thing, that is your right hand. Actually, it can be left hand as well, but it does not really matter, as you will see. Now, each of the fingers of your hand represent an alphabet from the name Alice. If you raised your right hand, the pinky finger will be A, ring finger L, and the rest of the fingers will be I and C, and your thumb will represent E. Now, close the three fingers in the middle, that is L, I, and C are closed. You are left with A and E. Remember this picture. Always trust your hand for the rules of debit and credit. By the way, if this reminds you of any weird symbol or some kind of cult, please ignore. That's not my intention here. We are visualizing the rule to remember when to debit assets, liabilities, income, capital, and expenses. Now A and E are assets and expenses. Both of them are debited when increased. You can see that they are both pointing upwards as well, so representing an increase. Debit is the default balance position of all asset accounts and all expense accounts. So you can easily remember that A and E are to be debited when increased, which you can see from the upward direction of the fingers as well. On the other hand, L, I and C, which are liability, income and capital, they are debited when decreased. They are pointing downwards representing they are debited when they go down or the balance in these accounts decreases. That's the rule of the debit. So this picture represents the rule of the debit for Alice, that is assets, liabilities, income, capital and expenses. If you know this rule, you will never be confused. You know in accounting, credit is the opposite of debit. For every accounting entry, the amount of debit is always equal to credit. Using the same hand we used to learn the rule of debit, if you now flip the position of your fingers like this, you will have the rule of credit. You can see now assets and expenses are pointing downwards, representing that they are credited when decreased, while liabilities, income and capital are credited when increased, which is represented by the middle three fingers pointing upwards. Note also that the default balance position of liabilities, income and capital is credit, the opposite of assets and expenses. The good thing is accounting has no exceptions. This rule always works. Now the key skill is understanding what is an asset, what is an expense, liability, income and capital. I will tell you more about this in a moment. We will also talk about the logic of debit and credit soon, but let's take a look at a few examples first. A good example of asset is cash. An asset by definition is something you own which will result in a future benefit. Like when you use cash to buy something you love. So the cash you own now will provide you a benefit in future. A classic definition of asset. When cash increases the accounting entry is debit. Remember the position of the hand for debit. Similarly when cash decreases the accounting entry is a credit. Remember the rule of credit. Let's say you bought a car by paying cash. In this case, one asset increased and the other asset decreased. You obtained a car which you did not have before. That's an increase in asset in the form of a car. While you gave away some money, hopefully not a lot of money, that's a decrease in asset. So the accounting entry would be debit, car, credit, cash. This was a transaction only involving assets. Often there are business transactions involving multiple types of accounts from our Alice abbreviation. For example, when you buy something on credit, let's say you bought a mobile phone from a friend on credit. You said to your friend you will pay the price of the phone in 7 days. Hopefully you intend to make the payment as well. Now at this point you own the phone but no cash was paid out. So at this point, phone being an asset will be recorded with a debit. But what would be the credit? There is no cash outlay. In this case, the credit will be a liability. This is because you have an obligation to pay in 7 days. 
there is an increase in liability which according to our Alice hand rule should result in a credit. So the accounting entry will be debit mobile phone an asset and credit amount payable to friend which is a liability. In our Alice abbreviation just make a note that capital C is sometimes also referred to as equity. To fully understand what equity or capital represents, what is the difference between them, and also what are assets versus liabilities and income versus expenses in accounting, what do I mean by default balance position, make sure you watch my free concise crash course on accounting, which is tailor-made for someone who wants to get a solid grasp of accounting without spending tens of hours learning the material. It's only one and a half hours long, but covers all key concepts and definitions from scratch including example accounting entries and how they flow from journal ledgers all the way to financial statements. Financial statements like balance sheet, income statement and cash flow statement. Now let's discuss the logic of debit and credit. In my experience, every time someone has tried to explain the logic behind debit and credit, they have failed. I'm talking about the logic behind why, for example, assets are debited when increased, why not credited, Although there is great logic in overall accounting system as it forces us to think about the duality of each financial transaction. I have also seen people argue over whether debit is good or a credit is good. People also get confused by terms like credit card and good credit and bad credit. So why in case of certain transactions we have a debit entry and why in certain other cases we have a credit entry. For this we have to understand that accounting is a language in which debits and credits are defined to result from certain transactions. They are both inherently neither good nor bad. A debit is not bad and a credit is not good on its own. For example, an increase in asset can be a good thing, while an increase in expenses may be a bad thing for a business, but both result in a debit. Similarly, an increase in revenue or income can be a good thing, but an increase in liability can be a bad thing for a business. Both of them result in a credit. It's like positive and negative temperatures. We know that the higher the positive temperature, the hotter it is, while the lower the negative temperature, the colder it is. Now applying the good or bad question related to debit and credit, is positive temperature good or is positive temperature bad? Is negative temperature good or bad? An increase in positive temperature may be a good thing where higher temperatures help sustain life and a bad thing where additional heat causes problems. It's all relevant. The same applies to debit and credit. In the end, a for-profit business wants to maximize profits and cash flow for shareholders and keep a healthy balance sheet. The default balance position for profit is credit, while the default balance position for cash is debit. So a company looking to make profits and maximize wealth needs both debit and credit. So stop worrying about the logic behind debits and credits. Just learn about Alice and the hand rule and learn how to analyze financial statements by going through my fp &A playlist. Link is available in description. Do also check out the accounting crash course and accounting assignment on my channel. Let me know if you found this information useful. Take care.